these lovely lilies are called the one day liller, lily <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? Yep. These lovely flowers are called one day lilies. <laughs> <laughs> she got the giggles. My name is Nelly Griffin. I am from a farming background in County Limerick. We had a farm at home, but uh, I, we didn't have a garden as such. Well, we had a kind of a garden, but all, all that was in it was a hedge. That was all because the hens would come and scratch the whole thing up. My mother anyway didn't have time for gardening, nor did my father. I, I started this garden, uh, I suppose it was over 20 years ago now. When I got married and had my own place, house and that, I just loved the idea of gardens. And then I planted with uh, daffodils and bluebells and primroses and cowslips. Actually in the springtime is when our garden is at its best on a sunny afternoon. It would just lift your spirits to, to see it. Unfortunately my, my husband doesn't have the same love. He just about cuts the grass under pressure and the rest then can go to hell. <laughs> When we, when we bought that field originally, there was nothing on it. So we started off with four big horse chestnut trees. And my husband is a, a maniac with regard to trees. So he planted and planted and planted. Loads of other trees. We have beech trees, we have sycamore, elm, birch, poplars, we have ash, we have oak, alder and we have elder and we have hazelnut trees like there's still miles too many trees growing up there and now they're all going crazy trying to get up to get the sun so they're all tall and gangly trees when they should be more uh, with a canopy with a wide canopy I've said to him several times stop planting trees and sometimes I, I go up and I see he's planted a fresh little one that he's found in some other area so I just pull it up and hide it <laughs> okay this is called a one day lily uh, as you can see it's a beautiful yellow uh, flower I think you can get them in a co couple of colors but they come out like that, beautifully fresh and open in the morning and they're like that from evening time. Unbelievable. I don't know why. But anyway, the whole, there are so many blooms on it, it lasts for a couple of weeks anyway. You know, so. So here we have the uh, Belfast sink, a traditional Irish sink, made in Belfast obviously. And at one stage these were really highly prized and were an indication of how well off you were but we have it in our garden at the moment and i'm waiting to, to i get around to planting it up at some stage but at the moment it's holding some water precious water because of the drought okay. this is this is like gold at the moment because it's so scarce it hasn't rained for nine weeks which is amazing in, in Ireland and the temperature is it has soared to 30 degrees and we're really not able for it here in this country. I was looking at television and here I saw Prince Charles 
uh, showing his jumpery to, to the gardening program on the BBC. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do with those tree, tree roots. So I got peat to insert them in the ground a little bit so that they'd stand upright. And I planted all these ferns around them and also primroses. So it's quite, quite spectacular in, in the springtime when the, the primroses are in bloom. It just shows you you can make a feature out of any kind of rubbish. <laughs> we have a nice specimen of a weeping willow. And you can actually sit in there under the shade and read your book or just chat to friend to friends or whatever. It's just very relaxing. I grow some herbs in the garden also, which I use in cooking. Uh, this is fennel, very good with fish. Okay, very fine kind of leaf. Uh, this is rosemary, with, uh, very good with lamb. And then this is mint, very good with uh, lamb also, or with in a G&T gin and tonic or very refreshing with a, in a, just take a couple of leaves and put them in a cup of boiling water and you have mint tea we have seven grandchildren Ella Sean Evelyn Ronan Garvin and Davin and last of all Oisin and as each grandchild was born, we dedicated a little pathway up through the little stone pathway up through the garden and just put an, put their name at the end of it. They all have little fairy doors then as well, uh, located here and there. This is this is Oshin's fairy door and he's the latest arrival. <coughs> Oshin came over and was tickling him on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> I intended having it a fairy garden, but I have I have fairies scattered around the place. Um, I I like the the idea of having little ornaments here and there for the kids. They go they go around a shrub, and then suddenly there's a little elf or there's a little squirrel, and there could be a fairy, or it's just it's just an extra little surprise for them. Fairies have been uh, always used in folklore in, in Ireland. Uh, the older people would tell stories constantly about fairies and I'm from a farming background. We had a fort in the middle of our, a fairy fort it was called, and it was a ring of trees, a circle of trees uh, in a kind of a mound but you were never supposed to touch, you were never supposed to plough that or touch it. And people who did actually interfere with the fairy fort, the legend has it that they were dragged out of their beds and kind of whipped down the road and were found like almost half dead the following day. Fairies are, are always like leprechauns and all that were always part of, of the Irish tradition. Two years ago, I was admitted to hospital from cancer. I had a breast removed. We have a walk out through the garden and it just brings down the, the tension and all that worry, you know. You just get this peace. A walk outdoors is just the best thing for your health ever. And thanks to God, I'm, I'm progressing nicely. No. 
all this um, electronic business now and, and internet and all that kind of thing. I mean, people are too absorbed altogether in that. It's so much better for you to be out there looking at what's coming out, say, what's blooming. The primroses now, for example, I mean, they, they're just a wild flower and they just come every spring with such uh, strength and colour. It's, it's just so uplifting. It's, it's just such a pleasure to go out and see something in full bloom. We have, we have the occasional rabbit comes to visit us. Um, uh, we, you just see him darting around there sometimes at night when we're driving in. Our dogs, of course, love going up sniffing around the area because I'd say they, they smell the, the little rabbits and everything, you know. One time we discovered a hedgehog up there and I think he had been maybe attacked by the dogs or something. And Pete, Pete brought him into the house anyway and gave him some milk or something. Was, I think it's the one thing you shouldn't give them. But anyway, he toddled off the next day and was gone. I'm so glad that we developed this garden because it's really an attraction for the kids especially like them. And they just go up and they root and they dig and Evelyn was there the other day now, Tom's daughter, and she was started digging a hole. I mean, what the hole was for, I don't know, but uh, she actually found a dead, a dead blackbird then that had flown into the window and just, I'd say, broke its neck and died. But she came across him, so there was a big funeral on for him yesterday, and there's a, a, a headstone and all over his little grave with R.I.P. <laughs> It's, it's, it's great, it, it adds that extra dimension to a house, really. I'm interested to see whether um, any of my children or grandchildren develop an interest in gardening. I'd love to see them doing it. It's a very soothing, calming uh, pastime, actually. Well worth it. You obviously decided that was the end there. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, and now it's time for a cup of tea.